you are navigating and, and you suffer an interruption, the first you should uh, do is to stop the boat. If you can, turn off the engine, speak with the, with the radio to, to alert the rest of, of the boats and, and try to, to keep a, a low profile. I, I know this is a very scary moment, but if you are nervous, you are shouting, or maybe you are throwing something to the orca, the orca's curiosity could increase a lot because it's something new for it. So if you have a low profile, the orca can feel boring, bored, and they leave. In this application, we have some maps and with traffic lights. We use green if there are not risk to suffer an interaction, yellow if maybe, and red if there are some risk to suffer an interaction. And with this information, we can help the rest of, of navigating people. The orcas are very intelligent animals. All kinds of cetaceans look humans like dog pupils. There are not register of any damage to humans. So I think uh, people uh, should not be afraid of, of orcas, but I understand this is a, a very, very scary moment, yes. We have two hypotheses about why they are doing this. The first hypothesis is that they are playing, but this is very related to juveniles. The second hypothesis is uh, one orca, uh, we name as uh, White Gladys, suffer an adversive event in which are involving orcas, tuna and sailing vessels. For example, uh, White Gladys uh, is swimming, who is swimming, uh, see a boat and she remembers this stressful moment and she says, uh, I have to stop this boat, uh, try to avoid to, to suffer this again. The population of orcas is very dynamic and is matriarchal. So the juveniles see that a very important mother are stopping the boats. So juveniles are copy this, this behavior because they think that is uh, extremely important for, for their survive. There are a lot of speculation right now, but the interactions are the same as these uh, last three years. Nothing changed. We have registered more than 500 interactions since 2020.